Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to deoxyribonucleic acid, <laughs> which is today's talk. Did I get that right? You did, yeah, yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the set, day two of what is Family History 100, which we're hosting to mark the centenary of Pony's, um, well, that's Pony's 100th anniversary. Um, we're going to have a lunchtime talk tomorrow, which will be by Colin. Uh, by Colin Chapman. Colin Chapman, who's flying in from England. Bristol, yeah. Coming from Bristol, tonight. coming in tonight. And then Friday, we'll wrap up with some of North of Ireland's um, projects, which will tie in a bit to what you're going to learn about today. Um, so I'm just going to do a bit of housekeeping. And let's just turn your phones off, please. <laughs> or to all the volume up, please. Um, there's no planned fire and evacuation of the event one does. We meet at the Arc Apartments on the other side of Queen's Road. There's no par free parking anywhere. <laughs> we're all paying and we're all displaying. And, um, and just a reminder that this is one of a number of events that happens over the course of the year. Um, if you sign up to Prony's Museum, which is on the Prony Express, you can get more details. And Ali. And I, do we have a tour afterwards? There's a tour at quarter past two. We have a tour at quarter past two for those who didn't go yesterday. And that tour meets in the foyer as you come in. So it's my pleasure to ask Mark to come and explain DNA to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, my name is Martin McDowell. I'm the Education Officer of the North of Ireland Family History Society and we've been quite active in DNA for the last number of years. So hopefully this will be helpful to you today. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible, but obviously there's a lot to DNA. So there's a lot of different aspects to it that I'm not going to be covering today. We are here in reception. We'll have a stand, we'll have DNA kits available, and I'm here at four o'clock today. So if anyone's got any questions afterwards, come up and speak to me after <coughs> the talk, or if you can't get to me because there's, there's someone else there, I'll be here at four o'clock. So, you, so just come to the stall and we can help you with whatever you need. So basically, to get started, what I'm gonna do today is explain to you what DNA tests can do, how they can help you, who provides them, and how to analyze your information. So we're just gonna look at a, at a bit of the basics and how you can start to move forward. So basically, the first thing I want to tell you is that there's five DNA companies out there that are all worldwide that help you to get information on your DNA research. So you're uh, all going to be familiar with Ancestry. You've all heard about them. They have their family tree business. They have, they have archive records that you can look at, but uh, they also provide DNA tests. So when you do a DNA test, they uh, will analyze all the different points within your DNA from, uh, from saliva, and then they will process that and give you a set of results that you can use there. My heritage do it slightly differently. They don't use uh, 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 saliva. It's, it's not a spit test, it's just a mouth swab. So a mouth swab is used by Family Tree DNA and my heritage, and the spit test is used by Ancestry and 23andMe. I'm just mentioning that now because if you're testing an older relative who maybe can't generate the right amount of spit, do bear in mind that there is other tests available. So you may be able to use one of those mouth swabs because I know when I got my uncle the test, he wasn't even able to hold the swab and I had to do it for him. So it's very easy to swab the inside of somebody's mouth with their permission. You could do that okay, but, you, but maybe you wouldn't be able to do the ancestry one in those circumstances. 23andMe may be a company that a lot of you haven't heard of and they really specialize in health tests. So if you're looking for information about whether you've got a predisposition to a particular type of uh, illness or condition, then 23andMe will give you that information. They also give you ancestry information as a secondary thing. But the limit with 23andMe is they only give you one and a half thousand DNA matches. So when you get a new match in, they drop one off the bottom. Now you might be sitting there thinking, if I got one and a half thousand, I'd be very happy with that. But, and that can be the case. It's, it's, it's the best matches that you get. But with the other companies, you get a fuller and more complete match list that then can be analysed and looked through. And you could potentially be missing something because you're only getting those one and a half thousand matches. 
Family Tree DNA is one of the longest established DNA companies. It's based in Houston in Texas, and they're the only one of the five companies that do all types of DNA tests. And we're going to be talking about that in a second. I'm going to explain to you. And for that reason, my recommendation would be, if you're going to do a living DNA test, also test with one of the other four companies, because it's not as good, and you're not going to get a complete analysis of your DNA without doing a second test. So that's the five different companies. Also now there's been recent changes. Uh, Ancestry and MyHeritage have very recently moved a lot of their DNA features behind a paywall. So what they're trying to do is hook you into a subscription. So they're offering you discounted DNA tests and then they're charging you to use some of the features. So just be aware of that. I'm not saying don't test with them. I'm just saying be aware that in order to use your DNA account fully, you may have to pay additional money to both Ancestry and MyHeritage. 23andMe do not charge you for that and Family Tree DNA don't either. So you can use those companies without having to pay a subscription charge. And that means you're only paying for the test. Okay, so moving on now, what I'm going to tell you next is just about the different types of DNA tests available. So there's three different tests available. The autosomal one you, that you can see at the bottom of the screen is the one that all five companies provide. That is a type of DNA that goes back to around your five times great grandparents. So it's giving you information back around eight generations. So it's going back, as I said, to your five times great. So that's if you, if you think you have four grandparents, then you have eight great grandparents, then on, on the generation above it's 16, then 32, then 64, and then 128. So your five times great grandparents is taking you back to 128 different people. And I'd be very surprised if any in this, or if anyone in this room knew all 128 names. But the reason I'm mentioning this is because you will have DNA from these 128 people. And that will give you the potential to find out about them and their descendants. So that's the autosomal DNA. It generally takes you round uh, to about 1750. I did a bit of analysis on this and it seems that most people's five times great grandparents who were living around 1750. So depending on the length of the generations in your family, they may have been old or young at that time period, but that's, that's a typical time period. So it's, it's giving you information about the last 250 years. So that's the autosomal test. The Y-DNA test is a lot more focused <coughs> on one line, and only males can do this, because Y-DNA is inherited from your father, who got it from his father, who got it from his father, and it goes right up the family line. So this can give you information right back to the beginning of humanity. Uh, you might think that's a very bold claim, but it's actually true. Because what happens is, every time a male has sons, what happens is they're supposed to give a perfect copy of their Y-DNA to the next generation. But humans being humans, we make copying errors, and they're called mutations. And when a mutation happens, it may happen maybe every five to six generations, or it may happen every fifth or sixth child. When this mutation happens, it gets passed on to only uh, the descendants of the person who inherited it. So if five siblings all got a perfect copy of their dad's DNA and one didn't, then that person will have passed on their mutation to all of their descendants. And what you can do is look for these mutations and see how they relate to everybody else who's ever tested. And that enables you to find your line going back into time. So it can give you lots of information on different lines. I'm going to tell you a bit more about the Y DNA in a second. But the third type of DNA is mitochondrial DNA. Anyone can do that test, either male or female, but only females pass it on. So they pass it on to all their children, boys and girls. And so everyone gets it from their mother, who got it from her mother, who got it from her mother, who got it from her mother. It's not as useful a test at the moment for genealogy. And that's because if you think about that line, the surname is changing every generation. Whereas on the Y line, the surname is generally remaining the same on, on every generation. So the mitochondrial test again can take you back many thousands of years, but it can also give you links in a lot more recent generations as well. The difference with the mitochondrial DNA is it is currently being upgraded massively. So at the moment, uh, they have about five and a half thousand different haplogroups or categories that they can put you into. And what they can do is they can tell you that these 
groups of mitochondria existed, you're part of this group and this is where your ancestors came from and then they can give you matches within that group. And what they have done is they have been using an academic study that gave all these haplogroups. And what Family Tree DNA has now done is they have redrawn this tree of womankind and they are greatly inflating it. And it's gonna be a game changer for genealogy. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you a lot more splits in the DNA. It's gonna be an awful lot better than what it was before because everyone's gonna be categorized into a lot more groups that are closer to the present day. And that's gonna help you with your genealogy. If you've already tested your mitochondrial, you'll have full access to all this information. So it doesn't mean that just that you have to wait for this to come in before you would test. If you test now, everything just automatically comes to you. So I just want to let you know that, that this is all being upgraded and all of the information is gonna be available within about the next calendar year. That it's gonna to start towards the end of this year. Everything's gonna be rolled out. So that's an increasingly useful test. So that's the three different types of DNA tests. I just want to talk you through each of them just a wee bit more. So with the Y-DNA, as I said, it is something that you get from your father's <coughs> father's father. So that's your patrilineal line, that's called. And it will give you information back thousands of years. There's three different levels of tests that you can do. So what you can do is you can do the lowest level, which is called a Y37 test. And that looks at 37 different positions within your Y-DNA. The reason that people do that test is it helps to identify a surname. So it's particularly good for adoptees who maybe don't know who their father was. If you've got an, uh, an unknown line somewhere in your family, if you've got an illegitimate uh, great-grandfather, if you can find a male descendant of that particular ancestor, you can then do this Y test and potentially find out the name of that ancestor. So it can be used in all different lines of your family, but you have to find someone who's a son of a son of a son of a son, who's on that, that Y line, that patrilineal line. So you can do the Y37 test and then upgrade to the 111 and then upgrade to the 700. So there's three different levels of test and that's obviously three different prices. So it's possible to go for the lowest and then pay the difference between the two tests. But I'm gonna give you the prices for the tests at the end they are the prices for the test that includes the lower level. So when you do the big Y, the price I'm quoting you includes the two lower levels because it's not possible to do the higher level without getting the lower level information as well. And that means that everyone then can compare at every level of Y DNA. So even if someone hasn't done the full test, you'll still be able to compare with them. So what big Y does, now that's the more expensive one, the third level, it gives you information, those unique variants, or those mutations I was talking about on those lines, it gives you those, it connects you to other people, you, you get names of people who you're related to on that line, and you also crucially get a time estimate. So each one of these mutations has been dated, and you can then get a date for when this mutation occurred in your line. So that's giving you an idea of the birth date of a particular ancestor. Now obviously you can't work and get a name of a family tree going back thousands of years but basically if you think of these these variants or mutations if you think now they're all given a name it's 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 like a couple of letters mm. followed by a few numbers that is basically the name of your ancestor and that is a person so that's a person that that dna started in and then it will allow you to see all the people that are descended from that person and the different lines that they're coming through so it can differentiate between matches and say to you, well, you've got 10 matches here, but your closest one is this particular one, your second closest is this one. And it can tell you how many generations are in between these individual matches. So as more people test, this picture becomes more complete and you would continue to get more information as time goes on. So you only pay for the test, you don't pay anything extra, and then information occurs whenever more people are added into the database. At the moment, there's 76,000 branches of the tree and there's lots of other mutations that have been identified, but they're not put onto the tree until two people in the world share them. So two people have to share them before they go onto the tree. So there's gonna be a lot more added in the years to come. Every week, these uh, results are updated and they're put into another website called Family Tree DNA Discover. And this is publicly accessible. 
you get more information if you're logged <coughs> into a family tree DNA kit, but even if you're not, you'll still get a lot of information. At the right hand side of the slide there, you can see all of the different things that you get on this website. So basically, uh, if you do a Y test, they will tell you what your haplogroup is. And this is basically, is one of the mutations in your line. So if, uh, if you've done the big Y test, it's the most recent one that they can give you. But there's lots and lots of mutations above that. And if you do an autosomal test with family tree DNA, they will give you one of the higher level haplogroups for free. So you get that free with the autosomal test. And you can then look that up. And what that does is allows you to use all of these other little tabs. So you can see notable connections. So what they've done is they have done the DNA of famous people and they've put them on there. And they can tell you that you're related to them because you share a mutation with them. It's just to make it fun. And uh, all of these people are going to be related to you. Your common ancestor could well be thousands of years ago, but that's why, uh, I mean, it is serious, it's correct, but it's just to make it a bit more accessible and a bit more fun. So they have people on there like Michael Jackson, they have uh, <coughs> Beethoven on there, and they were able to get Beethoven's DNA from a lock of his hair. So all of these things have been added in there, and if you're related to these people, then they will appear on that list. So if you know your haplogroup, you can look it up, even if you haven't done a Y test with family tree DNA. So this is accessible to anyone. Also, they have analyzed all the ancient remains that have been found around the world. All the academics do the DNA test. They print this in reports, family tree DNA, then add every one of these into their database. So there's thousands and thousands and thousands of ancient remains have been put on there, including the ones found in Rapland Island and the one found at Banda Hathi that you may be uh, that you may be aware of. And what this can be used for is if you look up your results, you can then see what ancient remains you are related to. And that can give you an idea where your ancestors may have lived at a particular time. Because if a lot of bodies were found at a particular place in England and you are getting all of those appearing on your list, then that's indicating that you had relatives who lived in that particular place at that particular time period. And obviously because they've done DNA, they know what time period these people lived at. So all of this type of new information is being opened up to you through your Y-DNA test. Okay, so moving on now to the mitochondria. As I said, they are looking at expanding this greatly. So they're redrawing this tree and it's the Million Mito Project is what they call this. They're going to give you a similar format to what I've just talked about in Discover. They're going to give you the ancient connections, they're going to give you the notable connections, and they're going to give you time periods for every single mutation on the mitochondrial side as well. That's not currently there, that's what they're working on. And uh, it's, it's all being formulated at the moment, and I've heard that it's looking very good. So I think it's going to be a real game changer for mitochondrial DNA. At the moment, when you do that test, they will test every single point in your mitochondria. So there is no possible upgrade for this test because every point in your mitochondria is currently being tested. So there are 16,569 di different positions within your DNA. They give you a result at every position. So they're interpreting all the information <coughs> that is possible. So all you have to do is test and then sit back and wait for all these updates and that will help you to get that information. At the moment, you will be broke down to a certain extent, but as, as I said, it's going to get better within the next calendar year. Again, if you do the family finder test, that's the autosomal test that I mentioned. If you do it with family tree DNA, then you will be getting a high level haplogroup. It's not the haplogroup that's the lowest down the tree that's going to be most useful to you, because that's the one you have to get through the mitochondrial test. But they will give you for free that high level haplogroup that will give you some information about your mitochondrial DNA and help you to find some of those ancient connections and whatever. So it's, it's still good to get that for nothing. And what you'll also be able to do is then search for other people with that same haplogroup and that's the <coughs> people that are related down from that same line because they have that same line of mitochondrial DNA. That can help you to maybe work out what line of your family people are related to you on. So all of these tools can help you in slightly different ways. So that's the mitochondrial one. I'm going to move on now to the autosomal because that's the one that all of the five companies do. And it's the, it's the test that most people are aware of. 
And what it does is it helps you to find people who are related to you through all of your family lines. As I said, it probably goes back to your five times great grandparents, so that's end of the 1700s. Uh, when you get results, what you're gonna get is a match list of actual people who you are related to. You're gonna get an ethnicity estimate, which is gonna give you a representation of the countries that your DNA has come from. That's an estimate. Each of the companies work it out in a slightly different way. So don't be expecting that to be exact, exact, exact. It can't be because it's only based on the DNA that you inherited and you only got half of your mother's DNA and half of your father's. So your siblings got different DNA from the same two people. So therefore, because your ethnicity results are based on what you inherited, you're going to have different ethnicity results to your brothers and sisters. So if you think of what it's actually telling you, then that's, that's the best way to look at it. But people think that this is telling them precisely where their ancestors came from. Now, because this is going back to your five times great grandparents, you've got 128 of them. They didn't all come from the one place. So if you do a DNA test and it tells you all your ancestors came from a particular part of Ireland, well then I would find that very hard to believe because I wouldn't think you'd have 128 ancestors all from the one place. They're probably all from different places and those 128 people got DNA from their ancestors who probably came from different places again. So what you're looking at with an ethnicity estimate is broad trends. And what people want from this is very precise information. And some of the companies are trying to give you very precise breakdowns of where your DNA came from. I would say, don't look at those precise breakdowns, roll them up to a country level or to a continental level. If you do that, they're going to be more valuable, they're going to be more accurate. But people do want a level of preciseness from these tests that isn't possible to give. So I would say if you get a percentage for England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland, add them together and think of that as British Isles. And if you do that, it's probably going to be more accurate. If you're looking at uh, Spain and Portugal, you know, roll them up because that's a, that's a different type of DNA. If you're looking at Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, then call that Scandinavia. If you roll it up that way, that's gonna be a more accurate representation for you. You also get a raw data file. Now this is not something that you ever have to look at, you just have to be aware of it. And what this is, is this contains all of the analysis that they do on your DNA. You won't be able to understand this unless you're a geneticist. So don't be opening it and looking at it. It's not going to help you in any way. How that can help you is that is the file that you would upload if you want to take your DNA results and transfer them or upload them onto another company's database. Because this is the test that's done by five different companies. So you can upload into the databases mm -hmm. of the other companies. And the raw data file is what you need to download if you want to do that. So it means you can do a test with Family Tree DNA and upload it into MyHeritage. Or you can test with MyHeritage and put it onto GEDmatch or Living DNA. I haven't mentioned GEDmatch yet, but it's not a company that sells DNA tests, but it's a company where you can upload your data from any existing company in order to compare. So it's like a sick company, if you want to think of it that way, but it's not one that sells DNA tests. It's just one where you can put your DNA data. So that's what you're going to get, a match list, an ethnicity estimate, and a raw data file. So just want to take a wee second now to look at how many cousins we have, because one of the things I hear at these talks is people think, well, I'm not going to get much out of this because I've got a very small family and I'm not going to have many matches. And then you're going to get thousands and thousands of DNA matches and you're going to wonder why. And then people start to think, oh, this is all a bit of a con because there's no way I'm related to all those people. So I just want to give you an idea of how big your family could actually be here. So if you're looking at first cousins, uh, the average apparently for first cousins is 12. So if you can count up quickly in your head how many first cousins you have, then if you have more than 12, you're probably going to have more than the estimates I'm going to bring up on the screen on a second. So what we're talking about here is second, third, fourth cousins. Now, people always get wrong what a second cousin is. And if you think in your head what you think a second cousin is, you're probably thinking that your second cousin is your first cousin's child. That's what most people think. That's not the case. Your second 
cousin is someone that you share great grandparents with. Because if you think of your first cousins, you share grandparents with them. So every time you go out in cousinship, you're going one generation <coughs> further back for the connection. So with second cousins, they are the children of your parent cousins, if you think of it that way. So you share great grandparents with them. Your third cousins, you share two times great grandparents with them. So when the companies give you an estimate, they will tell you approximately where to look in your tree for any particular person, because they can tell you how you're related to someone by the amount of DNA you share. And that will give you a ballpark area for where to look in your tree for this particular match with someone. So if you've got 12 first cousins, you're probably likely to have around 40 second cousins. Now then those second cousins are probably gonna have children and they're one generation below you, so we call that once removed. So that means that you're gonna have lots and lots of second cousins once removed. If you're 40 second cousins once removed, you probably have about 200 second cousins once removed. Then you're gonna have second cousins twice removed. You might have 500 of those. So even just going out as far as all of your eight great grandparents, you're gonna have a sizable number of people related to you. Then you go back to your second, uh, your two times great grandparents, and you're gonna have around 190 of those. And again, that's just on the same generation as you. And then we add in more for the generations above and below you on the tree. Fourth cousins, it's going up to about 940. Um, do we have any guesses for fifth or eighth cousins? The room? 5,000, yeah, you're pretty close. 4,700, haven't put them all on the screen, but eighth cousin's quite a good figure. So any guesses for that? No, not a million, uh, half a million. But still, it's, it's still pretty good. Most people go lower than that. <laughs> so eight cousin is quite a, a sizable figure. So, so, so what this means is when we all do a DNA test, then you're gonna get a sizable number of people that are related to you. In this room, there is gonna be more than two or three different connections between people in this room. And we just don't know it because we're not all looking at each other's names and seeing each other's match lists. But I can assure you, there is probably two or three different couples in this room who are, who, are, who are related to each other. When you walk to the shops, when you go into work every day, you are meeting distant cousins who you don't know you're related to. And we found out this in the Family History Society whenever we all started to test and people had known each other maybe for 20 years and there was a higher percentage of people in the one place all doing tests and then people found they had connections with people who they'd maybe known in this group for 10 or 15 years so that was a bit odd sometimes they're very welcome maybe sometimes it wasn't just as <laughs> as popular a thing but that gives you an idea just of how many people you are related to and it just makes everyone curious about whose name you're going to get so moving on then, why would you think about doing a DNA test? Well, it's telling you more about yourself and your connection to a community and a place, where your ancestors came from, what happened to them and how you got here. It's also giving you proof of your connection to a particular family. So if you've got a family tree that you've been tracing, well, you could maybe have traced their own family or maybe the paperwork didn't tell you the truth of things because people were writing down what they wanted you to know, not what the actuality was. So all of those things are possible when you're just doing a paper trail tree. So what you're looking for is to find matches through the ancestors that you have found on your tree. If you find that, you have proved your current research and you've made it all worthwhile. Then you have a family tree that you know is correct and you can stand over because you have 100% proof that is accurate. If you don't know your tree, if maybe you have an unknown line or maybe you're adopted, then this can start to help you to find relatives and that way you can find groups of people who all match you through particular ancestors and then you know you're related to them as well. And that helps you to build your family tree and find your sense of connection. It can also help you to find ancestors back beyond paper records. So we all know in Ireland, a lot of records were destroyed in the four courts. Well, obviously there's lots and lots still available and that's what you can access at Prony and other archives, but you can also use DNA to get you back beyond the records. So just to give you a very quick example, if, if, if you know that your family lived in an area and your ancestor was called John Brown 
and maybe there was three John Browns, all living in that area and all attended the same church or chapel. And you can find <laughs> records of maybe three John Browns all having children at the same time. And maybe they all had Marys and Johns and Williams and you had that as well. So you, it's not clear which one you are descended from. Well, through your DNA matches, you will be able to find people who are descended from the ancestor that you have. And then you'll be able to go back to the paper trail and you'll be able to identify which of those John, those John Browns is your ancestor. That's the type of thing that DNA can do for you. It's the only way to actually get that information because it's contained within you. It's not maybe, it's in the paperwork, it may exist, but there's nothing in the current paperwork to say this is your family. Your DNA test will do that for you. Now, in this little picture, the blue people, uh, if you start you in the tree and then uh, in the next little semicircle back, your <coughs> father's on one side, your mother's on the other. So basically what that's doing is showing you all the people that you will have DNA from. As you go further and further back in time, you've got smaller and smaller units of DNA that maybe wouldn't be detectable. So this is why some lines are going to dry up, but it will take you to your five times great grandparents. So, so that's basically what that little picture is showing you there. But what it's also doing is giving you a legacy to the future. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, there's no point in me doing my DNA. I know what I want to know. But if you die and your DNA dies with you, then all of your descendants are never going to have access to that information because your DNA is diluted with every generation. So if you've got anyone on the higher generation, on the generation above you, they're the important people to test because they have more mm -hmm. DNA from the ancestors than you do. So I'm talking about even here aunts and uncles. If you don't have parents, maybe you have aunts and uncles or cousins of your parents. They are still one generation above you and they can still be very relevant whenever you're working with your DNA results. So it really is a legacy to the future. You're giving that information in there and that's gonna be available for genealogists in the future to use. So who should you start to test with? I would always recommend starting with yourself because it's about you and then you will have matches through both sides of your family. But then, as I said, look for the older generation. Once you have tested the older generation, and I hope you like the little picture of time running out to test people who are on the higher generation. Uh, if you are looking then to test somebody else, try and remember that cousins divide and siblings multiply. So what I mean by that is if you want to then differentiate your matches into different groups, what you can do is you can start to, uh, to align some of your matches to your paternal side and some to your maternal side. Now, when you just test a sibling, and that's what a lot of people do, they say, well, I'll test myself, and then they're friends with their siblings, and they say, I'll buy her one for Christmas, or I'll buy him one for Christmas. And then they have another set of results because your sibling has different DNA matches because they got different segments of DNA from the same two people. They didn't get all of it, and you didn't get all of it. So you will have a lot in common, but you will also have differences. But what that's doing, is giving you more DNA matches to work with. That's great if you know how all these people are related to you. But if you haven't the first clue how any are related to you, what is that actually giving you? And that's what I'm saying, you're getting more DNA to work with, but what you really need to be concentrating on is trying to find people who are related to you on one side of your family, because that enables you to align people to that particular side of the family. On the family tree DNA system, what they allow you to do is to link confirmed matches into your family tree. And then your family tree is connected to your matches page. And what that does is if you test a cousin, say, they will look at all the DNA that you share with your cousin. So it's probably about 900 units of DNA. They will find over a thousand people probably who match you and your cousin and then they will put a little color in beside those people on your match list. So if the cousin's on your father's side, you'll get a blue symbol appearing beside all those people. <clears throat> if the cousin's on your mother's side, they'll get a red symbol in. And then that is duplicated every time you confirm a match on your match list. So that's how you would start to work. Now, once you've tested that cousin, what that does is that then splits your sibling's DNA for them as well. So I would say that it's more important to test the higher generation, then look at cousins, 
and aunts and uncles, and then after that, look at your siblings. So your siblings test only become really useful to you once you have those other people tested first. So that would be my plan, but of course, feel free to do it whatever way you want, but that's just my advice on that. If you want to get information on any specific line in your family, remember what I said about the Y and the mitochondrial tests. So you can target any line in your family, you just have to find the appropriate person who can do that test for you. So basically, just, it, or it just means that anyone is free to pay for a test. Uh, you can just buy the test, you can get the person to uh, do the swab for you, and then you can manage it under your DNA. Uh, 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 so you can uh, manage that under your email address. So you don't need the person to manage their own results. You can do that on their behalf. So it means that you're free then to target particular Y and mitochondrial lines that maybe you would want more information on. Okay, so if you've done a test with, uh, with uh, a company, then what you'll want to do is put it onto the, the, uh, the databases of some of the other DNA companies. And that comes into the uploading process. You only have to do this with the autosomal DNA test because five companies provide this test. The Y and the mitochondria are just the one company, so you don't have to upload it anywhere with those. So what you can do is go onto our society website, you can see in black there on the little green bar there's a tab for DNA. When you click on that, you get a tab that says how to transfer your DNA results. And then in green at the bottom, we have a little worksheet on each one of the uploads that you could potentially want to do, and it tells you exactly how to do that upload. Now Family Tree DNA has the biggest database for Northern Ireland, and uh, that is why we would promote it in our society because it's been very useful to us and we have a DNA project with over 9,000 people and I'm going to be touching on that later but I would encourage you if you've tested with another company that maybe you would want to upload your DNA into Family Tree DNA and that explains what to do. The upload process is free. There may be an additional charge by some of the companies for some of the features but you will get a match list for free so it's well worth doing. Even if you don't do an awful lot with it, just to get your DNA in there, it helps everyone. Because the perfect scenario is if everyone who had tested was in every company. Each company is giving you different tools for working with your DNA. I haven't got time to go through all of those tools today, but there's benefits to all of them because they're all giving you different approaches. So the, so the, the best starting position is to get your DNA uploaded into those other companies. <coughs> So just a wee bit more now about what we're doing in our society in terms of DNA. And we have a strategy which is promotion, education and innovation. So we're trying to promote DNA as a genealogical tool to get more people to test. So we want people in the street to do their DNA. We don't want just genealogists to do it. We want anyone who's got an interest in the past to do a DNA test. And then we want them to encourage their family and their friends to test as well. The more people that we can get tested, the better it is for everybody. And we have got a significantly high number of testers in the north of Ireland already. And the reason I'm saying north of Ireland is because we cover the nine counties of Ulster. And that is extremely useful for us. And the more results that we can get, the better it is for people. Because everyone can then find connections that they wouldn't otherwise find. We will then help, to help people to find their genealogical proof, help them to use strategies with DNA, like a chromosome browser, which allows you to see the position at which you match somebody. That can help you to find groups of people that are related to you the same way. So that means through the same ancestor. And that allows you to get a level of proof that you can't get with some of the DNA companies. So we go and do, and do talks, I guess, we go out to community groups and we'll do any talks or events that we're asked to attend and we always bring DNA tests along with us, again, to encourage that. We also carry out local geographical DNA projects and we're going to be talking about this on Friday at this time. So there's going to be a talk here on Friday at one o'clock. We're going to be mentioning projects which will include our DNA projects. But just to touch on that now, we've decided that we wanted to just really test what DNA could do, and we realised that if we got an area in the, in the north of Ireland where we had pretty good records in terms of gravestone inscriptions and church records and wills, where people were maybe slightly better off and maybe had stayed for a number of generations, we thought that we could maybe try to get more testing in that area 
And if we did that, then we could maybe be find connections between people who didn't know they were connected and build up more of a DNA picture of that area that then people <coughs> sorry, could link to from around the world. So we, we targeted Ballycarry and then we extended that into the neighbouring townlands of Island McGee. And what we've done is a lot of fundraising and in our society, because we're a charity, we don't have any funding whatsoever from any organisation. So what we do is we do it all ourselves. So we did went out and did DNA talks and we, 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 we did this in Zoom and we invited people all around, all around the world to test. And then we used the money that they give us for attending and we converted that and we bought DNA kits with that. And then we went to people who were never going to do a DNA kit in a month of Sundays. They were never going to do it. We've approached people who don't even have computers, who have no interest in their family history, but they're very willing to help a project such as this. And once we have their DNA, then we're able to link into this area through different lines of the family. And we can connect people back in the 1700s beyond paper records. We've been very successful in doing this. And at the moment, we're finding fifth cousins three times removed and sixth cousins once removed, things that you couldn't find if you weren't doing a project such as this. So we started to do this in those two major areas. We're continuing to do that. So if anyone's got an ancestor from Ballycarry or Island McGee, you may qualify for one of our free DNA tests. We're also now looking at doing little mini examples of this. And we're doing this in other areas of the North of Ireland. So we've done one recently on Bally Easton, and we've framed that not around the area, but around a particular document. So we found there was an 1813 church census in Bally Easton, and what we've done there is we have looked at the 388 families within that census, and we have tried to identify descendants within that census. And now what we're finding is that people that were living next door to each other on the census were actually brothers and sisters. But that wasn't apparent because they had different surnames because maybe the sister was married and she was living next door to her brother. We couldn't tell that before. Now we can tell that through the DNA results. So it's amazing what you can find from these local projects. We've also started doing one on the city cemetery in Belfast. And as I said, there's more to come. We've just uh, given approval to another one that's going to be starting in Killy Lay as well. So there is information and all of these are helping to build up the database. And what it means for you is that if you test and you get an awful lot of matches from any of these areas, that's telling you that you have DNA from that place and you may not currently know that. So everyone's benefiting from this and people all around the world that may have maybe an Irish immigrant who's went to Australia or Canada or America, then they're finding that they maybe have 10 or 15 matches in Island McGee. So therefore, Whenever they look back at the census records in America, they just know that their ancestor came from Ireland, but they don't know where. Now they know it's Island McGee because they're getting a series of matches from that place. And that's because we're building up the, the database and getting more people to test. So that's our approach in it. We also have a North of Ireland DNA project. And what that does is allows everyone to join our project that's hosted in Family Tree DNA. And then, as well as looking at your match list, you can look at it slightly differently. And what you can do is compare your DNA against everyone who's currently in the project. And because we have over 9,000 people, what it does is it tells you how much DNA you have from that area. So that's just an example of how our DNA has risen over the last few years. So that's where we were in 2014, at the bottom of the left-hand side. And you can see the curve of that is just continuing to go up. And that's because we're getting a lot of people joining us every month. So anyone who's tested with any company can upload their DNA into Family Tree DNA if you didn't test there, and then you're willing, so you're welcome to join our project. At the moment, we have 9,100 members, and that's just continued to grow every day. When uh, we supply DNA tests to our society, they're automatically enrolled in our project. And that helps us just to capture, and anyone can leave at any stage. But it means then that you can get a feel for whether your ancestors came from there. And how we would use this maybe is with an adoptee who maybe doesn't know what part of Ireland their ancestors came from. So they would then join our project. They would have a look and see how many matches they're getting in our project. Now there's 25 people per page. So if they're getting 10 or 11 pages of matches, they know they have ancestors from Ulster. And then that's something that they will continue to pursue. 
But if they only get in two or three matches or ten matches, well then they would they're they're very welcome to leave the project again because we don't really want those people because it helps to then dumb down what's in our database. So we want people that have ancestors from the north of Ireland so as other people can compare to them. And then any of those people that match you, you can look them up on your match list. So it's also a way of finding people that are way down at the bottom of your match list that you won't have maybe found. So these could be people because the average person who has results on family tree DNA is probably getting between 10 and 12,000 matches. You're obviously not going to be able to read through all of them. So you can start to pick out the people with Ulster ancestry by looking at your matches in the project. So that continues to grow and I think that will continue to grow over, over the years to come. So it's becoming an increasingly useful tool for us. As well as our DNA project, we also have a YouTube channel and we have a DNA interest group which meets uh, one Saturday a month. And what we do is record little mini bits of these presentations and then we put them onto a YouTube channel. And you're very uh, welcome to go on and look at some of those presentations. Of course, you're gonna have to listen to me probably on most of them. Uh, we have one there at the, in the middle that says you've taken a DNA test what now? It's a slightly longer video than the other ones and what it's doing is it's taking you through the family tree DNA autosomal test showing you all the different features of it and how to use it. Now there's a lot of information contained within that so if you're a beginner to DNA don't be expecting to watch that and just understand it all first time. It's a type of video that you might watch three or four minutes about a feature and then go back in and maybe play around with that a wee bit and say right well this is what I can do, I can try this out and then maybe go in and watch another wee bit. But it's just always there for you to refer to and then there's other little tips on uh, what you can do. We've just done one recently there on showing the future of your DNA. And what we're encouraging people to do there is maybe to mention their DNA accounts in their will and to nominate a beneficiary who could manage your DNA test after you're no longer here. So that's the type of thing we have up there, but you, you, you can feel free to go in and look at them at any stage. So we just want to finish off now by giving you a wee bit of advice on the prices it is to do these tests that I've been talking about today. This is probably the most important slide, but we've negotiated some discounts that aren't available online. And one thing you'll say about our DNA tests is normally everyone knows now that when you buy something, you buy it online and it's normally cheaper. With DNA tests, because we have special deals sometimes, it doesn't work that way. And we can actually normally source a DNA test cheaper for you than what you can buy it online. We have a DNA leaflet available on our standout out there. And if you take that, then you can always order one by just emailing us and we will then post that to you free of charge. So our society, in order to encourage DNA testing, we will supply these kits locally. So it means you don't have to order them from abroad and then pay delivery, because we'll, we'll cover that cost. So this is the price for the DNA test. The autosomal test is normally around 70 pounds. The prices are in dollars. I've converted these here by, by today's prices. I checked them all this morning to make sure they're, they're, they're pretty accurate. So we are selling these at the moment for 40 pounds and they're available in reception there if you want one of those. So they're just 40 pound cash. You can also pay for them online if you wish to do so. The Y37 is the introductory Y level. There's the three different levels of Y if you, if you remember from one of my previous slides. Y37, the 111 and the big Y. So the 37 starts at 62 pounds. And uh, what that means is you will then get DNA matches that probably will link you back in most cases to a particular surname. And that's what's useful. It's about getting that particular surname. But we obviously can't guarantee that because on some parts of the tree, there's going to be an awful lot of testers. On other parts of the tree, there might not be so many. So you get what you get and then they continue to come in every day for the rest of your life. So you will continue to get new matches in. We hope that you'll get good matches straight away. Most people now do because the database has been built up from, I think they started these tests in 1998. So because of that, they've been selling them for quite a while. And therefore, you've got all of those matches to compare with whenever you get added into the database. The 111 is giving you a higher level of certainty. It gives you a, a comparison of more DNA. Therefore, it's more accurate. And the 111 test allows you to compare at the lower level tests as well. Now, there is other tests that were available at one point that have now been withdrawn. And some people may have done, say for example, a 67 test that's not available to buy now. 
but it means that you can also compare with all these people who have tested to 67 because when you do the 111 you get access to all those lower level matches as well and that is 157 if you're going for it but if you've done the 37 you basically just pay the difference between those tests and we do have discounts available on those as well the big Y test is the all singing all dancing one I was talking about with the notable connections and the ancient connections and all of that information. It's normally 355. And what they do with that test is they run the test over millions of points in your DNA and they do it 30 times. And they do it 30 times to maintain the accuracy of everything that they give you. And they make sure that they get the same results of all of these different calls as so as they know that they're giving you the right information. So it's a highly accurate test and that's what you're getting for your 300 pound. It also, as I said, includes all those lower levels, including the 37 and the 111. <coughs> the mitochondrial is reduced at the moment from 126 and it's down to 94. If you want to get any combination of these kits, if you want a Y37 and a mitochondrial for the same person, then there's an additional seven or eight pounds discount available as well. But you can come and talk to me if you want any of those combinations and we're gonna always get you the best price for those. But that is, the prices that they would be available for this week. Uh, I'll also just mention there that if you buy a test kit, it doesn't mean that you have to have asked the person first, because what we can do is we can give you that kit curve yourself, and then we can add the name later. So these tests last for 20 years. I'm always loath to say that just in case someone puts it in the door and doesn't use it for 20 years, because we don't want people to buy these and just use them as drawer, as drawer fillers. We want them actually go out and test people. But they, if you haven't decided yet who they're, who they're for, it's very possible to take advantage of the, the uh, discounts, buy them in advance before you decide who they're for. Then once you get somebody's agreement to do the test for you, then you can conduct the test with them and send it off. And at that stage, that's when you add the name onto the account. So anyone who gets a test kit from us will be getting a password for their account and a kit number. And whenever you go on to look at your results, that's what you do. You go in and put in your kit number and your password and all of the information is available to you. Your ethnicity, your matches and whatever. And then it continues to grow every day as new people get added to the database. Then if they match you, they will appear on your match list as well. And you can log in at any stage to see those matches. You only get an email if the new match that has come in is extremely close because otherwise you'll be getting an email every single day and it wouldn't really serve any purpose. You wouldn't see them anytime. So I'll stop uh, talking on that now, and if anyone's got any questions for me, I'm very happy to take a question. Thanks very much indeed.